Hey, this is James Pelton, and I just want to do a quick video today. Uh, there's a lot of scams going around, a lot of people's uh, MetaMasks getting hacked and things like that. And I, I have enough sitting in my wallet um, that makes me just uncomfortable enough where I decided I should put some more thought into security for my assets. Um, even something like uh, Olympus. Um, you might think, oh, I have it staked on their website. I don't have to worry about it. It's with them. But in reality, actually, when you stake on Olympus, um, they give you a uh, S-Ohm token, which you, you have to import it even to see it. Um, but they give you an S-Ohm token. Let's see if I have it. Yeah, so your S-Ohm token sits in there. Um, so someone could come in if you know if they have your wallet address and if they hack into your MetaMask, um, and they totally could empty you out of your SOM or whatever you have staked. If you have a time staked, you get a MIMO token that they can empty that out. And the main way that people do these types of hacks are uh, the main way is through spoofing. Um, so when you set up a wallet, you get a twenty a list of twenty four words, right? And that's kind of like the secret code of your wallet. In fact, I think your wallet address is actually an encryption of those twenty four words. So it's like you can encrypt them, but you can never decrypt them. Um, so those twenty four words are like the key to the the keys to the kingdom. Okay. So if you ever get anyone asking you for your twenty four words. They're trying to scam you in some way, okay? You never give that. That's your words. Some, some people recommend you memorize them. I cannot do that. Um, I have them. I, I'm not even gonna tell you where I have them or how I remember them, but those are your 24 words. If you forget them, your wallet's gone, okay? So um, it's very important, those 24 words. So that's the main way that people get hacked or scammed, however you wanna word it. Um, is you might go to a website and they say, hey, what's your, you know, what's your 24 words? Or you might be in Discord and someone might, what happens a lot is people will DM you and say, they might even say like, hey, this is James Pelton. Um, I want to send you a thousand dollars worth of Ethereum. What's your 24 words? Okay. They never need to know that. Okay. Um, it's okay to give people your your, your address, which is basically the encrypted version of your 24 words, that's like your address. That's like your street address. So you still might not want to give it out. I kind of regret. I've put it on a few videos and um, it's just, it, it's basically your address. So people, uh, it's okay for them to know it. They can't do anything with that. But if they ask for your 24 words, um, don't give it. So the only exception is when you're first setting up your wallet. Like if you're setting up a MetaMask wallet, they're going to uh, they're going to give you 24 words and then ask it, ask for it. And that's the only time you should give it. So that's kind of the main way that I think people get, get uh, scammed. Um, the second way is uh, connecting to a site that's not legitimate. So when you go to a website and you're like connecting your wallet to it, it's okay to connect. And MetaMask is good nowadays. It didn't used to be this way. But they ask you about everything that you're going to do. So like request access and then it'll say, hey, do you want to approve or decline? And it'll ask you what it's trying to do. So you want to read through those carefully. Don't just click approve. You know, we kind of get used to computers to just approve everything. And, oh, yeah, I read the terms and conditions. Approve, approve, approve. Um, but especially if you're on a website that, it, you know, might be sketchy. Um, you know, like, so B&B Matrix is like a high yield site that might be a little more on the sketchy side. But you want to be really careful when it asks you, you know, read. If it says we're going to go ahead and empty your wallet. Is that okay? And don't just click approve. Okay. That's probably the second biggest way that I see people get scammed. Um, a third way is people might get access to your computer. So your MetaMask uh, sits on your local computer. Um, it's a browser extension, which might seem insecure, but it's actually better because it's MetaMask is not connected to the internet. Uh, at all. So it's just local on your computer. So people can't hack into your MetaMask itself. Um, but what can happen is if they somehow get access to your computer, like if you download some malware, um, and, and some of these attacks, I was watching a guy on YouTube today who he's not sure how they got access. They got in, they took all his MIMO tokens, all his staked time. It was like $15,000 and it was gone and he's not completely sure. So anyways, all this made me nervous enough where what I want to do is get an, a wallet that is the address is stored 
in a piece of hardware like this that sits at my house. And the only way you can access it is if it's plugged into the computer. Okay, and then when I'm not using it, I unplug it. Um, and I think that's the safest way to do it. So I just bought a cheap one. I bought the Ledger Nano S. And it actually, it kind of feels like garbage. It's not, it's not, what the hardware is is not super important, but I think Trezor is probably nicer. This was like 50 bucks or something like that. But I just want to show you real quick how you can set this up and how you can move your assets over to uh, this hardware wallet and just make you feel a little safer that your, your uh, things are a little bit more secure. So the first thing you're going to do is you want to buy a hardware wallet and really which one you buy does not matter. I would recommend something. One disadvantage with a hardware wallet is it's then hard to interact with like the Olympus Dow website. So uh, MetaMask has made it really easy where you can connect a hardware wallet, but it has to be either a Ledger, a Trezor, or a, a Lattice. Uh, Latisse, Latice, Lattice, I think it is. So it has to be one of those three. I've heard really good things about Trezors. Um, the Trezor T is actually really, really cool, uh, but it's $213. It's a lot more user-friendly. They have a cool card you can do. Um, Ledger has the Nano X, which is nicer. I'm, I'm just kind of a cheapskate, so I just bought the uh, Ledger Nano S. Okay, and you always want to buy these from the website itself. So I wouldn't even, don't definitely don't buy this from eBay or anything like that. Don't, I wouldn't even recommend you get it from Amazon. Um, I would get it straight from the website. So you go to treasure.io, I'll put the links down below and buy it from there. So um, the Trezor Model T looks like it's on back order for three months. So that might not be an option, but the Ledger website, um, this Nano S is working fine. So it's ugly, but it works fine. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna buy this, wait for it to come, um, then it connects with, I can't even hold it up here, but just connects with an ether, a uh, USB cable and I just plug it in. And then for Ledger, I'll show you how to set that up. You go to ledger.com slash start, and they give you really nice instructions. You just received your Ledger. Um, they have this Ledger Live app that you're gonna download, and then you're gonna choose a PIN number, so it can be, I recommend keeping it short because uh, on the Ledger, I can't show you here, but you have to, they, the Ledger is not a touch screen, so you have to individually, like if you make your PIN number uh, eight digits, you have to, push left and right and type in each number manually and it gets to be kind of a pain. And basically the pin number is just so if somebody gets a hold of your wallet itself, if somebody grabbed this USB off my desk or, where, or wherever I keep it, you won't know. Um, but if somebody grabs it, it's, they still can't use it without the pin number. Um, so download Ledger Live and you might have to download some updates when you do that. Then you're gonna choose a pin code and then you're gonna actually create a wallet on this device, okay? So they're gonna give you a new 24 word recovery phrase, okay? So they're gonna give you 24 and they seem like pretty random words. And uh, then what you can do is you wanna write those down somewhere. And I don't recommend writing them on your computer because that would be a way for them to get hacked, right? If you put them, like I have Evernote, and if I stuck these 24 words in my Evernote, if somebody gets access to my computer, they can get access to my Evernote, and then I, it's, they have my 24 words. So Ledger gives you this piece of paper and with 24 spots on it, and you can just write the 24 words there and then hide it somewhere or memorize the 24 words if you want to. But don't lose those 24 words, but also don't let anyone else have them. Store it in a secure place. And they say, um, they'll let you know, Ledger will never ask you. So like nobody from support is gonna ever ask you. No other human being should know those. Okay, and then it says install applications on your device. And actually there's a common misconception that you're actually storing like your Bitcoin and your Ethereum on the device. And that's not actually how it works. Everything's on the blockchain, okay? So you don't actually store anything on your, all this does is store your 24 secret words. Okay, that's all this does. So actually, to connect with MetaMask, which is what we wanna do, we wanna have the advantage of the hardware wallet, but we want it to be able to connect with MetaMask so we can still do all the things that we're trying to do. So you only need to install the Ethereum app, okay? That's the only thing that you need to do is install the Ethereum app. Um, then it's gonna have you confirm your words. Um, you're gonna add an account to your ledger Nano, and you can just call it your Ledger Nano app, and then it's gonna give you an address, okay? 
And then it's going to confirm on the device itself, it's going to say, hey, is this the right address that you see on your Ledger account? And you just say, you make sure it's the same, and you click yes. And then you can copy that address. So that's now your wallet address for this wallet. And then MetaMask makes it real easy. Once you're to that point, you can go, so, so here's all my non uh, ledger accounts and I need to put I'm probably going to empty everything out of these and put them all in my ledger account but you just do connect hardware wallet okay and you say I'm connecting a ledger you plug in your ledger connect um, and it says it wants to and you have to make sure that you're when you're first connecting you have to make sure that your ledger is uh, not locked so I have to type in my pin here which I'm not going to tell you what it is type in your pin here and then you have to open the Ethereum app on your application. That's just how MetaMask works. And then you connect. Okay. And then uh, it's already in here for me, but now you can see here hardware wallet ledger connected. And you can see what all is on that. So that, that's the address. So that's the right one. But then all your assets are going to be here on your ledger wallet. So then if you want to move things over to it, you just go. So these again are my MetaMask wallets. I actually have a lot of them for different things. But you can go to, to these, and let's say I want to send, um, I don't have very much here. Let's say I would just want to send 1.1 BNB to my new uh, ledger wallet. So here I have the address copied and just paste. And then I can just say send max and next. And you know while you're kind of getting used to it, maybe just do a little bit just to make sure that you have it all set up right. But then you give it a couple minutes and Pretty soon, when you go to your ledger, it'll show up in here. Okay, so like I've already moved over my Avalanche. Uh, I already moved over my Mimo over to this, this wallet here, um, to my hardware wallet. And while you're plugged in and disconnected, you can do everything. But then if I unplug, so let's say I unplug. Um, at first, I was concerned because it still shows up here in MetaMask. Like even if I lock my MetaMask, um, which is basically logs you out, so you have to type a password to get back in. Even if I do that, I was a little concerned because my ledger is not plugged in now, but it still is there under assets. And I was like, okay, so I'm not protected. If somebody got on right now, they could empty my wallet. But if it's not plugged in, but it's connected to MetaMask, if you hit send, so let's just say I want to send, um, I'll just, let's pretend that this, uh, this MetaMask account is a bad guy. And I got on here, and now, okay, I'm going to send all his AVAX to this wallet. And I click next. While it's not plugged in, you get an error that says plug in your ledger device and select the Ethereum app. So basically with this ledger app, with this ledger device not plugged in, no one is able to send anything out of this wallet. Okay, all they can do is reject. So even if they get access to my MetaMask, if they somehow, so now we have a, we're a lot of layers deep. So they have to hack into my computer because it's on my computer, it's not on the internet. Then they have to hack into my MetaMask. And then now even, they still can't do anything without actually plugging in the device. So what we've done is we've set up all these different barriers of entry for a hacker to have to get through. And hopefully by that point, they've just given up, right? Um, and they don't try to go any further. So I hope this is helpful. I recommend doing this. I'm gonna move all my assets right now um, to this uh, Ledger device and just to keep them secure. And I recommend that you do the same. Get a hardware device and any significant assets, move over to that. And uh, let me know if you, if you have any questions or need any help or get stuck. I'm happy to walk through it with you. Um, but good luck, keep, keep everything safe. And I just wanna show you real quick how I go about just sending. So I'm gonna send my S ohm right now. So um, the nice S ohm is just staked ohm. So when you are on the Olympus website and you buy your ohm, if you've, if you've watched my video about Olympus, um, when you go to stake it, when you stake it, it doesn't actually deposit it or anything like that. It just turns your ohm into S ohm, and, which is staked ohm. And S ohm has built into it the, uh, the rebase that their website has been jankety for the last while. Um, but your SOM is what gets you that 0.3% or whatever every four hours. It's, it's built into SOM. So unfortunately, if you're sending anything on Avalanche, Binance, Polygon, anywhere else, Phantom, Moon River, wherever, it's cheap. But unfortunately on Ethereum, it's going to cost me some to send over my SOM. That's really all I care about. If somebody wants to 
spend the $80 in gas fees to take my $75 of USDT, then they can go ahead and have it. Um, in fact, I don't think I have enough ETH here. Probably the gas fees are very low right now, but I'm going to try see if I have enough to send this 99 uh, S ohm to my uh, hardware wallet. So the address is here. I'm going to do max 99 S ohm. It does say I have enough in gas fees right now. The gas fees are super cheap right now, so I'm going to go ahead and confirm it. And uh, hopefully, I have enough gas. It looks like gas is going to be about 19 bucks. So we'll see if this actually makes it through. I had 24 bucks of ETH sitting in there. Um, gas fees have been going down recently, which is really nice. Um, I, it would, I could probably afford now to take my $75 of USDT out of there. So we'll give this just a minute. I'm going to pause it while we wait. All right, so it did come over. And don't panic if you go to your assets and, oh, I don't. I sent over 100 S ohm. Where is it? Um, sometimes Minimask doesn't have it. So one nice thing about uh, you have to sometimes import the token address in order to see it. Uh, but one nice thing about Ohm is they have your the different tokens here, which GOM we'll talk about soon. Um, that's a new token that that Ohm has. But I can just add my S Ohm to uh, my my ledger. So as you can see now in my main MetaMask account that I've always had, uh, I have no S Ohm, and in my ledger now, which I'm not going to connect it to the website for now because I don't need to. My 99 S Ohm are in there now, and uh, the nice thing about that is I all I had to do was trade the S ohm. The S ohm will still con continue to rebase. Again, their website is messed up right now, um, but that's all you have to do. And so I'm going to do that with all my important assets, and then they are secure. So thanks again for watching.